The graduation exercise at the U.S. Air Force Test Pilot School at Edwards Air Force Base provides students with a real-world test project and gives their customers real test results at low or no cost. It's called the Test Management Program. Test Pilot School is an 11-month program where we take the best aviators in the Air Force and other nations and we make them better so they can develop the future weapon systems that our nation and other nations will use. Part of their curriculum is academic, part of their curriculum is flying, but uh, one of the third pillars, if you will, is a test management program where they are able to essentially, in a more controlled environment, do exactly what they will do after graduation. For that, instead of using something that would be academic, we actually seek out opportunities to do real world test programs. One example of those programs is the Basic Envelope Air Refueling Control Laws, or Bear Claw. It's a project aimed at obtaining preliminary data that leads to an ultimate goal of having an unmanned aerial vehicle be able to conduct air-to-air -air refueling. Before a UAV can approach a tanker, we have to have safety uh, trips in place for the flight control systems that allow a UAV to safely enter um, the pre-contact position and the contact positions for the tanker. Uh, before a UAV can go up there, and before we can trust the UAV to go up there, we have to have safety trips in place. To be able to build those safety trips, we need to understand what the flight control systems are doing uh, in terms of pitch, uh, pitch and, uh, and lateral commands uh, throughout the envelope. So we have to really characterize what a basic uh, flight profile is around a tanker. Um, to be able to do that, uh, we have the Vista jet that can record a lot of data and a lot of parameters for us in terms of uh, HUD video. And, uh, and the stability uh, computer system that's on board. VISTA, which stands for Variable Stability In-Flight Simulator Test Aircraft, is the school's one-of-a-kind F-16. It has the ability, uh, through heavy modifications of the flight control systems, to emulate flying and handling qualities of other aircraft. So it can emulate a UAV, it can emulate an F-22, it can emulate a heavy aircraft. That makes it very useful when people want to see how something will go, particularly in the UAV or now RPA world, um, in a manned aircraft, in a safe environment with many, many safety trips built into the system so that it can alert the pilots, but we can gather a lot of data that way. On March 17th, the Bear Claw team, with the help of a KC-135 tanker and crew from Altus Air Force Base, Oklahoma, gathered data by flying the Vista to the tanker. This was the, the, the data gathering so that it can be flown as a UAV. So from this, we will take uh, the data, uh, hand it over to the research lab, and then what we'll use from that, use our recommendations to actually build limits that we will have uh, project pilots on the next step go up and actually have them hands-free uh, have the aircraft fly up uh, autonomously. They'll be at the safety pilot at the controls autonomously just to uh, go up and maintain those positions and uh, investigate to show that it is indeed possible uh, safely. According to Major Michael, who was a tanker pilot himself, they were able to finish the flight test ahead of schedule. You know, we had six scheduled flights. We actually only ended up flying four. We got a lot of good data right at the very beginning. So we actually were able to finish uh, under budget. The Bear Claw Project was a joint program for two different Air Force Research Laboratory groups within the Vehicles Directorate, the Automated Aerial Refueling Group and the Automatic Collision Avoidance Technology Group. According to Colonel Zamat, customers like these are attracted to the test management program in part because of the low cost. Because we are a training environment, an educational environment, we have to get this activity done as part of the curriculum. So our flight time is paid, the crews are paid because they're the students, the instructors are getting paid, the airspace we already paid for it because it's all part of our year. So it turns out that when you look at it monetarily, the amount that these organizations have to contribute out of pocket to make all this happen it is actually relatively minimal because it's already a sunk cost in, uh, in our curriculum. But Colonel Zamat adds there are other reasons test projects come to TPS. We have some of the most gifted instructors and testers on the planet. Uh, you obviously have to be of extremely high caliber to come through as a student, and I'd like to think that you have to be an extremely high caliber to come back. So we have the human capital, the human intellect uh, to make that happen. We're also a very lean organization, to be honest with you. Uh, we were able to make all of that test happen within the building, coordinating with a bunch of uh, partners and agencies outside, but it was all able to be done here 
within our facility. The instrumentation, the coordination, the, uh, the airspace deconfliction, the deconfliction between two major commands, uh, Air Force Materiel Command and Air Force Education and Training Command uh, to get the various assets. The particular changes to the software that had to be done on the Vista aircraft were able to be done here. So it, it, it puts us in a very competitive uh, place to be able to execute this type of test. Don Waldman, Edwards Air Force Base, California. This has been Dateline Edwards. If you have questions or comments, we'd like to hear from you. Please send us an email at channel.6 at edwards.af.mil.